till now, uh, we have concentrated basically on the mouth of the River Lossie. Uh, but I want to just move up a bit, but to, just to show you why. In the 1880s and 1890s, Lossie was incredibly successful at catching herring down at Lowestoft, and uh, they did this using sailboats. But at the turn of the century, we started to get steam drifters coming in, and the steam drifters were bigger than the sailboats and broader than the sailboats. So it didn't take all that long before the harbour was filled with boats. And then uh, it became obvious that this was happening in all the other harbours along the coast, and they reckon something like 400 drifters were, were jostling for places in the harbour. So somebody had the bright idea that they would provide parking spaces where space to tie up in the river, because that's what their fathers had done years before. There was an obstacle, and uh, the obstacle was the bridge that they had put up just 10 years earlier, uh, 20 years earlier maybe, and it was so low that the drifters couldn't get up. The, the little boats, the sailboats could because they could uh, drop their masts quite easily and get up into the upper reaches of the, the river. So they decided they would build a new bridge, a bridge from Sea Town across and they did this by dismantling the previous bridge. George Ritchie, who had built it, uh, moved it up now, up to the sea town. And in the 1950s, his son, Willie Ritchie, uh, did a, a refurbishing job on the uh, bridge, and they built this new bridge. The previous bridge, the, the original uh, new bridge there, had actually been capable of opening to allow bigger boats through taller boats through, maybe I should say, uh, by swivelling uh, part of the walkway horizontally. I, I couldn't manage it really in the diagram here. Um, but what they did was they made it so that they could uh, get uh, drifters through the holes in between. So there's a drifter. Aren't we lucky one just happened to pass? So this piece of uh, video is about the briggy. And there's the briggy as it was uh, in the, the days of yore. And September 1915, uh, well, September 2015, beg your pardon, I decided that I would just make a record of, of how it looked for no particular reason. So I took my uh, cine camera and uh, walked uh, across the bridge, just taking pictures of the, the metal work on the bridge. I didn't try to study the timbers underneath, <laughs> I probably got wet. So, okay, the metalwork isn't too bad there. It has been zinc coated, uh, zinc metal sprayed, and bits are, are showing a little bit of a problem. Uh, a piece of uh, rotten welding, uh, leaving loads of grot round about. Uh, but a lot of these uh, these brackets, the side brackets, uh, were in quite poor condition. So I just continued across taking uh, pictures of, of that. Some of them were very good. For no particular reason, some of them were passable. And the rails were, were the same, some bits good, some bits passable. Uh, that bit not very great. That bit coloured, that's interesting, isn't it? And the yellow rust. So I made my way across the um, the bridge, stopping every now and again to take a, a bit that I like to look off. But you can see that, that when it was zinc sprayed, it was actually zinc sprayed over the top of the bridge that had already been rusting quite considerably, these big pop marks there. So, made our way across there and you see the sections bolted together. And some of the side members were uh, starting to look pretty grotty. Pretty good, I thought. Uh, so I don't know. 
whether these were changed in the 50s. When you see every now and again you get a really bad patch of, of rust, really scabby looking stuff. But of course it's quite a um, severe duty to be uh, exposed for and <laughs> your entire life to the North Sea. So we might think it's, it's actually done quite well, considering it hasn't been maintained. And then we're nearly across the other side and they put up a big notice there. And when they did it, they made a bigger mess than had already happened. So we finished up with really awful scabby mess there and that's us across to the other side now. So there's a bit that I just looked at so that you'd know what it, what it was. Across the other side I had a look at the, at the back side of the uh, this breakwater and you can see that all the bits that are cracked at the front were cracked at the back. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the only bit that was in good condition was the section which was uh, rebuilt in a sink I would guess the 1960s or 70s. And yeah, see, there's a bit hanging out of the, 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 uh, the back. Okay, back onto the bridge, going across the other way, and very quickly it becomes obvious that this down the river side uh, is in a much poorer condition. There's a broken stay, it stays gone altogether. Uh, compared with the, um, the the upriver section, so there's another broken stay. It just vanished altogether. We didn't have that in the the upriver side. Uh, you can also see that there's been there've been repairs. Uh, they've not been uh, um, very uh, extensive repairs, but uh, they they have filled up. I would guess holes that had appeared as uh, sections had rusted through. So poor poor stuff now, uh, and, and quite sharp edges left by the, the rusting. And the junction there, uh, I don't know what you would do with that. suspect that some of these repairs were put on using uh, unprotected steel bolts. It's all pretty poor condition. Nay, Bonnie. I mean, every so often you, you come to, you know, another of these days, just about to go, I would say. Need a sugar that'll come to bits. require some cleaning up if you were to try and do anything with it. I 
Dynasty looks as though it's just about to go as well. So every so often you get a, a really bad piece of, of corrosion. Uh, this whole section looks as though it isn't too bad till you come to each of these junctions. And you say, well, then, see, clearing that up would be really pretty awful. That's a big hole. I tried to make it more obvious by putting my hand behind it so that you can see it's, you know, just... Uh, rather too small to put your hand through, but it has very sharp edges, I can tell you. So we'll continue our way across, there's another really badly uh, corroded stay. The one next to it just visible, uh, and that was quite good. Uh, so again, it's it's a very variable situation. Another really uh, sharp catchy there. This is me getting quite close to the sea town again. Nearly back, but uh, even there you see a nasty, nasty hole. Easily catch a child's hand in it if, if they were making their way across. And then you think you're coming to nicer and nicer bits there because they've probably been more sheltered. It's interesting that the, the wood seemed to be all in good condition. Uh, but I just uh, put in a couple of shots of the really nasty bits and if you imagine a, a child's finger going into one of these things. Okay, at the end of the bridge we have this thing here which which includes a map which uh, um, to me uh, seemed to be saying there's three miles if you want to go upstream. <laughs>